On this week's episode of the LA Business Podcast, we talk to an expert who knows how to get federal contracts. And if you've ever seen a request for a proposal for government contracts, they seem incredibly complex. But after talking to Jason White of the Federal Code, it really sounds much easier and much more attainable uh, than it, it sounded in the past. Let's jump right into this week's episode of the LA Business Podcast. Welcome to the LA Business Podcast, your destination to hear stories of how businesses grow and scale. I'm Robert Brill, CEO of Brill Media and the host of this podcast. Now, let's jump right into this week's interview. Everyone, welcome to another episode of the LA Business Podcast. Today, our guest is Jason White. Jason is an expert in the federal contracting process. He has nearly 13 years experience helping businesses succeed with federal government contracts. And Jason is the authority in formulating strategies to increase approval in federal government contract bids. So he equips entrepreneurs, business owners, nine to fivers, and anyone else who desires to supply products and services to the federal government uh, with knowledge and resources to make that happen. So that's really interesting. How did, like, first of all, tell us, Jason, how did you get into this business? <laughs> So look, Robert, I was working at the gas station, man. And um, my friend, yeah, literally, I was happy to just to be a, a gas station attendant. Uh, my friend literally was walking past and I uh, said he was going to start getting government contracts and trucking. Had no clue what he was talking about, but that's how I got started. Just, just okay. went down a whole a friend. Right after that. So you had a friend who wanted to get into trucking for the federal government. Okay. So, and how long ago was this? That was 2008. So back in 2008, information really wasn't that good on YouTube. So I had to, I had to make sure I had to piece everything together off of these YouTube channels that were just weren't, weren't good back in 2008. And do you do you have a, a company? Are you do you operate as a company, or do people just speak to you specifically? Like, do you have a company name? Yeah, yeah. So it's the Federal Code. Uh, I got the hat on, but it's the other way around. I just like it with my head backwards. The federal yep. code, okay. Federal code. Yep. So uh, that's the name. That's the name of the company, and that's how people can reach out to me and get information in terms of what does the process looks like, what their companies can qualify for, what is mm -hmm. the entire A to X, and I never say Z because we want residual information income from the federal government. So okay, reach out. So what and, and so like this applies to. Everyone, everyone has the ability to get federal contracts, right? Yep, 100%. See, most people, when they think about federal government or federal government contracting, they think about what they can do for the government, what product they can sell or what mm -hmm. service they can give. Mm -hmm. But I just reverse engineer that. It's not about what you can do. It's about what you can manage. The federal government is always going to tell you what products and services they need. Mm -hmm. You just got to be able to go get it for them. Okay, so so give us a couple a couple use cases here. I understand working with the federal government is quite um, there, there's quite a set of rules and restrictions and boxes you have to check. So, like for someone just starting out, what do you need to know about working with the federal government? Number one, they're the largest purchaser in the world. That's the first thing. Okay, the largest purchaser in the world. Their business isn't based off of people; it's based mm -hmm. on demand. So there's always going to be a demand for a product. There's always going to be a demand for a service. So the second thing you need to know is the federal government understands that people are starting new businesses every day. They don't care about your, you haven't been in business for years. They don't care that you don't have a, a niche. The federal government just wants to know, can you provide this product or service to me? And what's the price? How much is it going to cost me? Okay. Your, your mindset has to be right. So I speak a lot about mindset versus what you need and boxes you need to check because that's a myth. So, so yeah, mindset is incredibly important. Yeah. That's probably one of the, 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 one of the very early lessons I learned when I started this business that like, you've got to be able to take the highs and the lows and mitigate, mitigate the challenges, never get mm -hmm. too high on the high never get too low on the low. Yep. Mindset is the way to do that. Yep. Okay. So, so there's like, like, and the government, so basically the U.S. government doesn't care whether or not you've been doing this for years. They don't care about your brand positioning. They really care, like, do you have the ability to serve the, that particular thing that they need? Yeah, and that's the piece right there, Robert, that a lot of people aren't familiar with because they're used to saying, okay, or used to hearing anyway, 
you need to have this first. You need to have that first. And even before you can have this or that, then you can start putting bids in for contracts. Right. When that's not even the case. You have to have an LLC, of course. You have mm-hmm. to have a DUNS number, of course. You have to be registered into the database, SAM.gov, mm-hmm. of course. That, mm-hmm. that Those are the requirements. But after that, the federal government will allow you to subcontract out this work because they they know you're a brand new company and you may or may not have the bandwidth to complete the total the totality of what they're asking for. Uh-huh. They, they allow you to sub it out, and that's what we do. So there, there's a pretty rigorous application process, right? Even the steps that you mentioned, LLC, Duns, uh, which is the Dun and Bradstreet number. Yes, sir. Um, but when you talk about what is it, Sam.gov? Yes, Sam.gov. Yeah. So that's is that is that a, a rigorous application just in by itself? all right so i'm gonna be honest with you back in 2008 it took me about six months to complete it but that's because i had no knowledge no nothing and i was impatient but mm-hmm. i teach my students how to do it how to go through the process it probably takes them 45 minutes an hour something like that Oof. yeah crazy okay. I guess they time frames from six months to an hour <laughs> so yeah i mean that's that's huge that's why you pay that's why you pay an expert to teach you um, okay so once you have the sams um sam.gov registration like i've i've participated in some government rfps with other other agencies that we work with and okay. it, they seem daunting <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hours and hours of requests like yeah. how what should someone like like there's a few places to go. Like what, when you're, when you're, when you're doing this RFP, how do you find RFPs good. Uh, or, or pro- opportunities? Good, good question. RFP request for proposal. So all we do is we, we only use Sam.gov. You mentioned it is a lot of places to go, but all these other new or not even new, but other websites that have solicitations or proposals or quotes or requests for, then they all draw from sam.gov. So I just teach people how to navigate through sam.gov because that's where everybody's pulling the information from anyway. Got it. And so, and so is your primary, so for federal code, your job Mm -hmm. is to help businesses and and individuals figure out how to navigate the federal government. Yeah, because overall you got some people that don't even want to learn it. They just want to get government contracts for their particular company. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have the done for you service, do it for you service. But then you have the other individuals that want to start a new business model with little money down because all you need is LLC and mm-hmm. they might not have the best resources. They might not have credit. They might not have business credit mm-hmm. and getting into the federal government and subcontract subcontracting out contracts is one of the best ways to do it in my experience. Cause that's how I did it from the gas station. So I, I have all that, encompass in my company the federal code and that's what i teach people but it's it's, it's, it's kind of it's crazy because a lot of, like i was saying a lot of people just really don't know how to even start to do business with the federal government so whether you're a company or an individual i just make sure i include all of that information but the one thing this reminds me of is that there's a movie uh, a couple couple years yeah. ago with uh the gun runners yeah, and they totally those. got themselves yeah. into Iraq or Afghanistan or something. And that sounds like, it's like, I don't want to end up there, but right. they would have been good. They, they did everything perfect. What they screwed up at is they went and got ammunition from China and lied about it. If they didn't do that, they would have been fine. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So, so tell us about the done for you service. Like, so like my company can go to you and just say like, look, like help us get government contracts. Is it government contracts or government RFPs? Like how far down the process do you take people? No, so we getting them contracts. I'm not giving people proposals so they can try to figure it out. Mm-hmm. We doing a whole we doing a whole gambit. So your company will come to me and say, hey, look, we want to get government contracts for radio, or for advertising, or for podcasting mm-hmm. because there are a lot of federal government contracts specifically for, for that. So my done for you box company will have two dedicated people to your company that specifically Mm -hmm. just look for those qualifications that you asked my company to get. Mm -hmm. They will submit the paperwork on your behalf. They will, uh, they will uh, um, communicate with the federal government on your behalf. Once the contract has been awarded, they're invoicing the federal government on your behalf. Everything is done for you. You just have weekly or monthly meetings. However you guys choose to set it up where you can check Mm -hmm. the progress and the status of, uh, what's happening with, with your company? Because at that point, 
it'd be your company. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Bro. Okay. <laughs> so, and then, and you have a course, right? Like, tell us about what, what are you teaching? The, like, uh, certainly I get the sense of it, but like, tell us about how the course works. Yeah. So the course is digital. So it's all uh, uh, it's module style because mm -hmm. people with the nine to fives, they want to have me as a one-on-one, -on -one, but they might not have the time. The bandwidth isn't there. So uh, we created the digital course so people can still learn how to obtain federal government contracts and sub them out and understand what to do after you've been awarded a contract because we're not winning contracts in our backyard. There's a federal facility in all 50 states. So I could be in Maryland, but I'm winning contracts in California and Texas and wherever the case. So I have, to, I have to teach people effectively how to manage that. All of that information is in the course. And I, know, I think most people that buy a digital course, all you get is the digital course. But mm -hmm. I still allow people to have access to me for Q&As every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time. Hmm. Yep. Wow, that's that's amazing. And so, what what types of industries uh, have you have you worked with, um, and that you've helped people with? Uh, trucking, real estate, digital content, um, janitorial, landscaping, construction. Um, you you name it. We we've done it. IT services, nurse, medical, nurse staffing. I'm actually naming all the contracts my company has as well, as well. wig making. So you name it, we've, we've done apparel as well. Um, wait, gen, people, wait, apparel and janitorial. Okay. Let's, let's talk about those two. Yeah. When you say those are the contracts you want, like you work with other companies who provide the janitorial service or your company is actually providing the janitorial service. Like how's that so, work? Yeah. Good question. So my company actually has no uh, bandwidth to provide any of these services. Got it. Zero. So yeah. yes, we go get a, a janitorial company so they can go do the work wherever the federal facility federal facility is. Same thing with the apparel. We go get the apparel company to make the clothes that the federal government is asking for because the co the contract got awarded to my company. So now I just go out and get somebody that actually is ready to do that type of work. Yeah, man. Wow. <laughs> that is super interesting. Yeah. Because like I said, the <laughs> mindset isn't about what I can do, but I can manage it. I, I, Okay, if the federal government says, these are my expectations, I can echo that to another company. I can manage that properly. Right. I already know what the expectations are. So now I just got to go echo that to a company that's able to do it. And we just watch, rinse, repeat. We just keep doing it. What um back Back when you were, when your friend told you about this, what were like, how did you evolve to get this? I, I imagine you didn't start out with this exact model. So, what were the evolutionary steps for your business? Yeah, man. So I was that I was, I'm at the gas station. So I was that guy that I always speak to other people about. I bad credit. I had no resources. My network or my network was definitely not with individuals that had companies, not back then anyway. So I had to I had to really figure it out and understand, okay. I know I can't do this. I know I can't. But if I go through Google, there's tons of landscape con uh, companies out there that'll be willing to help me out on my federal government contract. See, I, I learned my big evolution was learning that a lot of these small companies don't even know how to get government contracts themselves. So that was my cherry on top. Hey, I'm getting a government contract. If I get awarded, would you like to help me out with this contract? And that does two things. That's steady work for that company, right. steady work that they weren't getting, and they're getting in bed with the new business partner who just happens to be working with the federal government. Right. It's a it's a it's a channel it's a channel it's a, a channel expansion, as it were. Yeah. Um, a new steady stream of income. Wow, that's that's amazing. amazing. Yes, so sir. so okay. And tell me about the last two years with COVID. Like how, mm. How's your business? Like I'm, 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 I'm trying to figure out before you tell me. I'm, I'm curious. Like, does this, does COVID help your business or does COVID hurt your business? Tell me, tell me about how, how that went, went down. Yeah, good. So the federal government isn't demanding on people. Is, is, is by the demand. So now when COVID hit, there was a demand for gloves, gowns, um, disinfecting wipes, cleaning. All of that stuff was high demand. So all of my contracts, basically 10X, nothing slowed down. They actually heightened, actually, because they need more. 
even when the government shut down or told their employees to go home, they still wanted to clean the buildings. So well, my, yeah. my janitorial contracts kept going. They kept rolling. <laughs> <laughs> right. The employees not in the building, but they still asking me, hey, bring your cleaning company back. Matter, matter of fact, not two times a week now, four times a week. So all of my stuff, yeah, all of my stuff, 10x, man. <laughs> um, are there, and so and what is the next, like, are there any initiatives or is there, is there any, like, how are you, how are you going to continue that expansion or improvement in your business um, as the world kind of like opens up back after COVID? I just try to stay ahead of the curve as much as I possibly can and look at the contracts that I know will be in demand. So when I am talking to certain companies that have a niche, I can say, look, look what's happening right now. Like right now we're kind of in wartime. Mm -hmm. What's happening with Russia and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is we're taking resources from the U.S. and we're going over there, which means stuff at the U.S. need to be replenished, which means mm -hmm. they're going to have federal government contracts for it. So which means companies like mine can go after other small businesses to help replenish what's being taken away from the state. So it's like manufacturing, physical, physical goods. 100%. Whatever it is, right? Security. So now it's security contracts, IT services. Now I need to look for IT companies. Like I'm always trying to just make sure I'm ahead of the curve. So when I get introduced to a new client or a new student, I'm ready to help them out. Plus, I'm not talking about stuff that I used to do. My company, my personal company is still winning contracts this year. So right now we've already been awarded five contracts. So my information is always current and valid. And I'm not talking about stuff I used to do. I'm still obtaining contracts for myself as well. So you could, so like you could win an IT services contract. Mm -hmm. so, so here's my question, right? Like I'm assuming you don't know anything about IT services. No. Okay. Right. <laughs> no. Like how, how do you, how do you, do you have to, do you have to find an IT services company ahead of time? Say, look, I'm trying to win this thing. If if I win it, then you can have it. But I need you, like, do you tell people like, I need you to help me with the, the nuts and bolts of it like yeah good question so yeah simultaneously i'm speaking to comp multiple companies not just one speaking yeah. to multiple companies while i'm preparing my proposal because i have to get a quote from them i can't submit a quote without knowing how much i need to pay a company so i'm getting quotes from companies putting my money on top but even mm -hmm. before i get to that point i'm having them to help me understand what the scope of work is i don't actually have to know what it is i just need to read it enough to articulate it to the company that I'm going to choose to do the work. I don't really care what they're doing. If they know what it is that I'm saying and they can give me a quote back based off of the expectations of the federal government, I'm using that, put my money on top, sending it up, and then going to the next one. Really? Making it simple, man. I don't want to you learn. Must... I don't want to learn IT services. Right. <laughs> Neither do I. You must be very detail oriented. Like you, you must have the ability to juggle like 50. 50 i don't know 10 20 50 different like yeah moving parts because i've seen those rfps and they're yeah. nuts it stresses it me the heck out to look at <laughs> well here's the thing though too like robert there's only certain parts that you need to read see but a lot of people are misconceived that they need to read the entire thing to understand this and to break this down there's only three sections that you need i found that out obviously through trial and error right. i don't even care if this rfp had a thousand pages it's only three sections that you need because the federal government, what they like to do is they won't tell you, but they're mandated to put certain pieces of information into each RFP or RFQ. They're mandated to mm -hmm. put the information in there. And sometimes the information takes up 60 pages. It'll take up four pages. It'll take up five just because they're mandated to put it in there. But it doesn't affect what the actual need is asking for. So once I figure that out. I was like, good, save the day. Cause I hate to read, but I gotta be detail oriented, like you said. Well, so 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 do you just do you just like I mean, but you have to answer all the questions, right? Like if there's a question on the RFP, you have to fill it out, right? See, I love this. On the federal level, it's uh -huh. so obviously we know it's federal, state, and local. Yeah. I've never went for a state or local con government contract a day in my life. I only work at the federal level because the federal level is so it's black and white. It's no proposal writing. You're just submitting documents based off of what they're asking me for. And when they asking me for documents, 
I just asked my subcontractor for it. I don't have to have it. <laughs> so at the federal level, we just working like this. We going. But the state and local, that's when you come into play with asking you questions. They doing this. They doing that. I don't want the state and local. Just give me at the federal level. How, how do you, um, cause you might have yourself a new customer here. Cause I think this is really interesting. How, how do you, how do you do the, how do you price out the done for you, uh, service? So it really just depends on, uh, what's, what the current company's bandwidth is, Got what it. they're not, what their knowledge is of over government contracting and being specific. Yeah. I will give them the option. Hey, we go for everything. I can have your company obtaining government contracts for everything. But some people say, no, I just want to stick to construction only. Okay, sticking to construction only is a different price point than me just coming in and giving you what I know a business model is that instantly works. But if we can only go oh. construction, then that, that's a little bit more difficult and tedious. And now I have the that price point is a little bit different. So you're so basically you're saying an entrepreneur can literally copy your business model and you'd be okay with that. Yes, I'm giving them a company. Boom, I'm giving it to them. Here so like, it is, so right like, here. So if I so if I'm if I'm okay, so I'm thinking about my like 23 year old self. I, yeah. I remember gra I graduated from college and I had this friend. He's like, I'm gonna be an entrepreneur. Yeah. I'm like, okay, that sounds good. It sounds interesting, but right, I, it's not I, sexy. I told, well, I told my parents, and my parents were like, but you don't know how to do anything. <laughs> Yeah, here we go. I'm like, yeah. oh, darn it. I don't know how to do anything because I can't be an entrepreneur. <laughs> so I spent 10 years working in advertising. And after that, like, I know how to do stuff. And yeah. so I can start an advertising firm. Yeah. Um. So I'm just thinking about this. Like, like I don't really have to know how to run a janitorial company. What mm -hmm. I can get is work with you, either take your course or you do it, you do it done for you. Mm -hmm. You can get me janitorial contracts and then... I can follow your system to be like, all right, I'm going to find a, a local janitorial company who will do it. I'll take my little bit of cut. They'll get most of the money. And that's it. That's the that's game. Because I don't, I, I just need to know how to communicate. If I know how to talk and write emails, I can run this business. That's all. That's it. If I can talk and communicate effectively, then I can do this. And, and that's how, that's one of my strong points that I always knew growing up. I can talk to anybody. I'm always a truth teller. I can communicate. My biggest piece of, of learning was staying consistent and getting through the government jargon. So when I hear it, I might not say, I might not repeat the government jargon because I hate it. But when I hear it, I know what they're talking about. Okay. I know what they're requesting. I know what they're asking me for. So mm -hmm. I had to quickly learn the government vernacular. So when I hear it, I can, you know, sift my way through that whole roller coaster of words. And I imagine, I imagine that like working with you, because I, I wouldn't want to be, I wouldn't want to be on the other side of that conversation talking to someone like me i have no idea what you're talking about and i look at you with a blank stare saying i don't understand any of what you're telling me can you please explain verbatim like in detail like like you're talking to a five-year-old what this yeah. actually means so i imagine they like talk they like working with you which which is probably very helpful for them as well right which keeps my which keeps my door always moving people still coming in and, and because Anytime anybody hears about government contracting or tries to, tries to do their own research, which mm -hmm. most people do anyway, right? Mm -hmm. They get in the weeds with the words, with the wordings, with the difficult, with the quote unquote difficulty of it all. And then when they come talk to me, they're like, "Wow, I had no clue. It really could have been so simple." And, right. and once you learn my process, it, it, I don't have the best way to do government contracting. I have an effective way. So once you learn my way, right, once you learn my way, now you can branch off and do it how you want to do it. At that point, it really doesn't matter because now you know. Um, how how can people find you? Uh, easy. Thefederalcode.com. That's my website. That's where all my services are. And then if you're on Instagram, I like to show my life every now and then, show that I'm a human being <laughs> at I am Jason White underscore. Before before we go, I am curious how how do you how do people find you? Like how yeah. how do you attract people who are interested in either the course or the do it yourself the do so, done for you service? We do events all the time. Somebody's always asking me to speak, which I love. I love you know getting on stage and just talking about how to do business with the federal government. We run um, tons of just uh, self awareness ads. Not selling the course, not selling the done for you service. Just self awareness about who I am and what I can bring to the table. And that's how a lot of people find me all day, every day. Awesome. Yeah, man. 
Jason White, thefederalcode.com. Yes, sir. Thanks for being with us today. Really interesting. Appreciate your time, man. This is awesome. Thank you for listening to this episode of the LA Business Podcast. If you like what we're doing on this podcast, please consider subscribing on Apple or Google Play, leaving a five-star review, and sharing with your friends. If you have any questions, comments, or recommendations for a guest you'd like to hear on this podcast, please email me, robert at brillmedia.co. Thank you. Have a fantastic day.